Wait until you see what I found. Hopefully it's still there. Holy so big! Honestly, this is the biggest snail I have ever handled. I'm so excited, my hand is shaking right now. I'm telling you guys, I've never been more excited to find a mollusk. South Africa's dry season, it's a rare thing for the rains to show up unannounced. Yet lo and behold, if you arrive from Ohio, the stormy spring weather has a tendency to follow. On the first leg of our journey, the crew and I lodged at the remote Tainskloof Game Reserve, a 13 hectare expanse of pristine wilderness nestled in the Eastern Cape. With heavy rains come the emergence of life, as creatures like termites take to the wing with aspirations of pioneering new colonies. From beneath the decomposing leaf fall, millipedes seem to appear in droves, and from the saturated earth crawls a slimy being that we simply had to get in front of the cameras. Okay, you good? Yep. Come oh. here, check this out. All day, it has been raining, and we thought we would not get an episode, but lo and behold, a break in the clouds, and wait until you see what I found. Hopefully it's still there. Ooh, there he is, I can see him from here. Oh, he's so big. Look at this. Look, look, look. Yes! Do you know what that is? Looks like a giant snail. It is. It is the giant African land snail. And I have never been more happy to see a snail in my life than I am right now because we've been dealing with rain all day. We didn't think we'd get an episode. Sure enough, there's a break in the weather. I come out, I'm looking around. Mario and I were actually filming termites coming up out of their nest. They got flooded out. I turn around and what do I see? This giant beauty. Oh boy. I think we may not have that long. Yeah, we've got just a few minutes to film this episode, but what I wanna do is gently pick this snail up and see if we can take a close look at its anatomy. You ready? I'm gonna try to do this really gently so that I don't scare it. You sure you're fast enough? Yeah, yeah right? One speedy little mollusk. Oh wow, mollusk. it didn't go into its shell. Nope, that's because I was incredibly gentle with it. it. Does not feel scared right now. And look at that creature. Honestly, this is the biggest snail I have ever handled. Now, similar to slugs, they have a very interesting design to their body. Now, separate from slugs, obviously they're carrying their house on their back, which you can see that shell right there. Such a cool looking shell. Go ahead and zoom in on that. Look at that unique design, almost like the stripes of a tiger. And it's got that conical shape. It looks like it's kind of nubbed off at the end. Sometimes they are pointy at the end. Ooh, and he is just latched onto me right now. Now, most of the time you think of snails as being a creature that as soon as it's disturbed, it will suck its body into its shell to stay protected. And of course, if I was trying to eat the snail, that's what it would do. But in this instance, because I picked it up gently and placed it on my hand, it feels completely comfortable. Let's look at the face of this animal. It's got those very distinct eye stalks. And as we know, these creatures do not have good eyesight, but what they can do is sense light in the environment. Now, just underneath the front of those two little stalks, it has a scratchy radula. Ooh, and I can feel it on my finger right there. And what they do is they move that across the environment. These are like little environmental vacuum cleaners moving about cleaning up all of the dead debris. Whether it's decomposing plants or even animal matter, it's fair game for these snails. Man, we've been seeing their shells, but this is the first one we've actually seen. Well, what's interesting is that when it rains, it's pretty much the only time you're gonna see a creature like this come out. Right now it is overcast and it is very wet. Look at the soil. This is mud that we are dealing with, which is the perfect time, ugh, covered in it now, for an animal like this to come out and move about. If you were to put your hand upside down, would it stick? Huh, good question, let's find out. Yep, look at that completely glued to my hand right there. Wow. And he actually has some weight to it. It probably weighs about a half a pound. Really? Yeah. Oh man. It's a lot heavier than you would think. And it's so cool, a mollusk like this out here in the desert terrain of South Africa. And again, the only time you're gonna see a creature like this is either at night or after a large rainstorm has moved through. Obviously this creature's taking advantage of all the moisture in the ground and all the wet plant life that it can chomp up on. 
I'm so excited, my hand is shaking right now. I'm telling you guys, I've never been more excited to find a mollusk. This thing is crazy big, but believe it or not, they can get bigger than this. Their shells can grow up to seven inches in length. Whoa, man, that's like twice the size of that one. Right? Talk about being a giant snail. So Mario, it's not uncommon to have larger animals in Africa. Why is everything so big? Yeah, he said big animal, so I was thinking like elephant, but I guess it's the environment. There's probably a lot of food and a lot of uh, nutrients that these animals could get in order to get big. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Now look at its skin. So bumpy. Almost looks like it would be rough and rugged like the skin of a rhino, but it's actually very slimy and sticky. Mark, why don't you go ahead, put your finger in there, tell the audience what it feels like. Oh wow, it's not rough at all. No, slimy, isn't it? It's not even bumpy. It's like gooey. Like a booger. Like a big, gushy booger. Coyote, is its shell growing or is it going to find a new shell? No, that's a great question. The shell is actually growing with the snail and it is attached on the inside. So unlike a hermit crab per se, this creature cannot leave its shell and find a new one. Ooh, is it leaving a slime trail on your No, hand? actually that's a good question, Mario. What it is leaving is technically called a snail trail just a layer of goo on my hand. And that actually helps them to mark their territory and it allows other snails to sense when potential mates have gone through their environment. I think the stripe down the back of it is so cool. It actually like looks a lot like a shell as well. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Now I imagine that this helps to blend it into the environment. I mean, camouflage wise, this creature is gonna to wanna to stay hidden. You may be saying to yourself, well, Kaidi, that thing looks gross, like a big slimy booger. What would possibly be eating this? Birds, reptiles, if they could get into the shell, obviously something like, you know, a hyena, if it were to come across something like this, may baboons. think, ooh, baboons. I'm sure baboons would love to eat these. Anything that would be able to get to the soft insides of this creature's body would turn it into a meal, but fortunately, they are capable of sucking their bodies in and oftentimes can stay protected from predators. Now, let's take a look at the underside of the snail. I'm gonna peel it off of my hand very slowly here. Oh, that's sticky. Look at that foot. And that foot is what's used for locomotion and they just very slowly move throughout the environment. And as you can tell, these snails move very, very slowly. Such a cool, primordial creature. Now, similar to slugs, most snails also have an external lung called a neostome. And I can see that on this one, but it's very hard to identify. It's right there. Mark, see if you can zoom in on that. I'm sure you're watching this episode and you're thinking to yourselves, wow, this certainly is a cool looking snail. But unfortunately, these creatures are invasive in many areas and they are detrimental to agricultural crops. They reproduce very easily. And once you have thousands of these out there, they can quickly wipe out an entire crop. So Coyote, could you eat this snail? Oh, actually that's a great question because some people do eat these snails. However, you have to cook them. If you eat one of these snails raw, they sometimes can carry a nematode inside of their gut. They can actually cause meningitis. Oh, wow. Yep, this snail specifically can make you really, really sick if you ate it raw. So if you're out there in a survival situation, this is not something you want to pick up and just chomp down on. They have to be cooked. So you definitely want to wash your hands if you handle one too. Yeah, considering the fact that I'm covered in snail trail, a little soap and water will get all that stickiness right off. Well, I'll tell you what, on a day filled with rain, when we didn't think an episode was gonna be possible, we have a break in the weather and managed to find the giant African snail. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, big guy, let's let you speed back off into the environment. When it comes to filming animals for the Brave Wilderness Channel, it's simple to see why working with giant gastropods makes getting epic shots rather easy. Their slow nature and calm demeanor makes them seem just as friendly as they truly are. If you stumble upon one of these slinking snails in your garden, unfortunately they are likely eating your vegetables, but fear not when it comes to handling them. If you can tolerate their sticky slime, your encounter will be completely harmless, and a little soapy water will wash that slimy snail trail right off. If you thought getting slimed by a giant land snail was a sticky mess, make sure to go back and watch the episode where my fingers were glued together by the bright yellow banana slug. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on our next location. 
Oh, what an awesome experience getting slimed by a banana slug.